There's new evidence linking mental health risks and maternal cannabis use during pregnancy. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope you're having a good day. So a new study in JAMA Pediatrics um, has shown that when mothers were using cannabis during their pregnancy and the longer into the pregnancy, the more likely that children will have health issues such as ADD, behavioral issues, um, aggressiveness, um, irritability, etc., as they approach their teen years. Now, this is actually an extension of what's referred to as the ABCD study, which stands for the Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development Study, where they tracked approximately 12,000 patients from birth and looked at all different types of exposures that they may have, looking at their development, comparing across the board. Really quite a huge study that's been doing, and it's an ongoing study. Now, this particular finding was actually found a few years ago in some of the younger kids. And so now what they're doing is they're looking into a later age of these same children to see if these issues persist. And unfortunately, they do. Now, what they did in this particular data set is they compared three groups, women who never used cannabis at all during the pregnancy, women who found who had maybe used not who maybe women who did use but stopped when they found that they were pregnant and then the other were women who used cannabis after they found that they were pregnant and through their pregnancy interestingly the women who who stopped using right away when they found that they were pregnant as well as the women who didn't use at all did not show these types of developmental and mental health issues it was really only in the women who continued to use it so this is not proof that this is an issue it is a large study that um is showing an association but certainly something you know most people would pro would say well that kind of makes sense. Don't smoke pot when you're pregnant. I get that. Um, and of course, this certainly leads to that. Now, there are a couple of big things in this study, which leaves us wanting for more. Number one, they did not say how much cannabis that a woman was consuming, nor did, she say, did they say how she was taking it. Now, we know sometimes even with similar to with cigarette smoke, there lower oxygenation, um, you know, potential damage to the lung tissue of the mother. And that can impact the um, the fetus um, and, and, and after the baby's born, the neonate. Um, and what they've actually shown is that children exposed to cannabis, you know, when they look at earlier on, they actually were looking at MRIs. They showed that 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 the babies who were exposed in utero were more likely to have lower brain volume, lower white matter volume, as well as lower birth weight. These things were also found with cigarette use. And this is something that I actually had done some studying on way back in the 90s when I had a baby, when I was at Tampa General, who was born, a full-term baby, was born at about four and a half pounds. And, you know, average should be at least six, if not more than that. And that's when I really did some additional research learning about um, why that can be. So I'm assuming it could be um, something similar. But it would have been nice to know if there, if there was a correlation specific specifically to inhaling it versus other routes of administration. But we do not know. Hopefully there will be more research that will show about this as well. Now, um, as, far as, as far as the use of it itself, um, you know, we know that THC goes through the placenta. How do we know this? Drug test some babies if there's a concern of, that a mother may be using drugs during um, pregnancy or at least during, you know, prior to labor and delivery, it will show up in the baby's um, urine. And of course, that's how we know for sure because we know the baby didn't take it themselves. Now, mo the most one of the more common reasons why people, moms, do use cannabis during pregnancy is due to nausea. And of course, as most of you know, nausea during pregnancy can be rather intense but there are other things that a woman could do to potentially reduce this first of all staying very well hydrated keep the blood moving that's really good drinking certain herbal teas such as ginger tea where even up to four cups a day is safe adding in some mint the mint also can come in but one of my all-time favorites from my nausea which is um, chamomile tea or i do it as sleepy time tea that should not be consumed because um Chamomile has been associated with increasing uterine contractions, and there's a concern potentially for, um, for um, preterm um, labor if that were to happen. 
Now, sometimes eating smaller meals every two hours, not letting the tummy fill up, that can be helpful. Avoiding some spicy and fatty foods, sometimes that can help. Now, vitamin B6 with magnesium. This is an old standby. Um, I see this. I see mainstream um, uh, OBGYNs who are doing this, but this is something that we've been recommending for a long time. Um, the C-bands, the, the, those bands that kind of look like wrist guards that um, have, the, have the acupressure point that goes right there. Um, it's used, obviously, when people are in boats, but I've had success with this as well. So there are lots of other opportunities out there to help with nausea. And thankfully for most women, it, it is just a mostly first trimester. Some women, unfortunately, does go longer. But certainly of all of the options that are out there, cannabis would not be something that I would recommend that anybody do. So hope that gives you some new information. Um, but please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Please notify, hit the notification button. Um, join us on our Patreon, all of our other social media platforms as well. Have a great day. We are all about health, education, and choice. Please share this with others who are of the same view.